Hello friends, this video on diversity in living organisms part 19 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So what are nematodes? The word nematodes actually means thread. This word nematodes means thread. So let us see what are these organisms. They have got complex, complex body differentiation. So even more complex when compared to the platyhelminths. So their body is also bilaterally symmetrical as I mentioned before also that platyhelminths onwards all the organisms will have bilaterally symmetrical bodies. Body made up of three layers of cells that is triploblastic. So these three layer of cells are used to make the outer lining, the inner lining and some of the organ systems. They have a sort of internal body cavity and that is why they are called as pseudocilomate. What does the word pseudo means? Pseudo means false. So that means they do not actually have a proper true internal body cavity, but they have a, a, some kind of cavity which gives the appearance of a coelom. So that is why they are said to have a pseudocilom, that is false coelom, which is not actually the coelom, but they get, give the appearance of a coelom. So these organisms have a system level of organization. What do I mean by system level of organization? That means in these, in case of platyhelminths, what do we see? We see that the digestive system was incomplete. Whereas in these nematodes, we have a simple complete digestive system. So let us see what all um, systems it has in its body. It has a simple digestive system right so this simple digestive system consists of a mouth intestine so mouth is for ingestion of food and intestine is for digestion of food so it has also got a simple nervous system so a simple nervous system is also present it also has an excretory system so excretion is done by cilia or flagella there are no circulatory system or a respiratory system. So these are the systems which are present in it. A digestive system is there, a nervous system is there, excretory system is there. I mean, they are not very complicated systems. They are all simple systems. But at the same time, there are no circulatory system, no respiratory system. But at least there are some body systems present here. So that is why it is said that it has system level of organization. The shape of the nematodes are generally cylindrical and unsegmented. Unsegmented means there are certain organisms where their body is divided into parts, into equal parts known as segments. So in nematodes, there is no segmentation as such. It is a plain structure which is cylindrical in shape. So it almost gives the appearance of a thread and that is why they have got this name nematodes because the word nematos means thread. They are parasitic and therefore they are often known as parasitic worms. That means these nematodes stay inside the body of other living organisms and cause disease in those organisms. So therefore they are parasitic and are more commonly known as parasitic worms. So you saw that in, in our previous uh, slide, you saw that the platy helminths because they are flat in shape, therefore they are known as flat worms. Similarly, these are known as parasitic worms. Okay, they are mobile, they are capable for, for, of moving from one place to another. And also one more thing I would like to mention here, as I said, these are pseudocilomate. That means they do not have a true internal body cavity. So what exactly, why exactly is the body cavity not, we say that it is not a true body cavity. That's because the cavity is not lined with a layer of tissue. Hence, it is not very distinct. Let us suppose if there is a cavity here. I am just trying to explain you what is the meaning of getting lined. Let us suppose if there is some cavity here, some space here, right? If the space gets lined with a layer of tissue, what happens? This space becomes very distinct. 
So that time we say that it has a true silomic cavity. But in case of these nematodes, the cavity, there is some space, there is some free space inside the body cavity, but it is not properly surrounded by a layer of tissue. That is why it is not very distinct and we say that it has a kind of internal body cavity and that is why they are called pseudosilomate. Right? Now let us look at some of the examples of nematodes. Ascaris and area are some of the common examples. This ascaris is nothing but a small intestinal roundworms. They are often found, find, found in the intestines. So they are the intestinal worms. So if you look at them, the body is not segmented. So it is not divided into segments or parts. And they, are, they have got a thread-like structure, cylindrical in shape. Correct? So this was all about the nematodes. So let us now go ahead with the next uh, class that is Anelida or often called as Anelids. So again, let's look at the meaning first because now you must be saying that if you understand the meaning of the word, you at least get some idea about what kind of organisms will fall under this class. Right? So this Anelida, what does this mean? It is a Latin word basically which means little ring. It is a Latin word meaning little ring. Quite strange, right? D does that mean that they are going to be looking like a ring? Let us see what is it. They also have got complex body differentiation. Now it is very obvious that now the complexity is not going to decrease. It will keep on increasing as we go ahead. Body is bilaterally symmetrical. That is also again expected. Body is made up of three layers of cells, triploblastic, because we have already crossed cellular level of organization, we crossed tissue level of organization, we have even crossed organ level of organization. So it is very obvious that it has to be triploblastic, one layer for the outer lining, one layer for inner lining and the third layer for making the organs. True internal body cavity is present and that is why they are known as coelomate. So that means in this case now we have a cavity which is actually surrounded by a layer of tissue and in that cavity the true organs can be packaged. As I said why do we need this cavity at all? We need this cavity so that we have some space to hold the different organs. Right? So in the uh, previous class when we were talking about the nematodes what did we see? The body cavity was present, there was some open space inside the body, but it was not properly surrounded. So it was not very distinct. So it gave an appearance of a body cavity, so we called them false coelom. But in this case, we have an exact distinct body cavity with lot of space. So now when you have more space, you can hold all the organs in correct places. So here the body organization is little more organized. Now as body becomes more organized, the complexity also keep on increasing. So these organisms fall under the category of coelomate. That is distinct organ differentiation. That means here you can see the different organs. When I talk of organs, I am talking about the organs like kidneys, heart, lungs. So you can see the different organs in different places actually. Now, extensive organ differentiation. That's what I mentioned just now. So now you have a true cavity which can hold the organs, hold the true organs rather. So you can have, you can see the organs distinctly. So it is in the organ system level of organization because now you have distinct organs you, and those organs will actually form distinct systems. So you have a separate digestive system, you are going to have you know, a separate nervous system, a separate excretory system like that. So what all organ systems are present in these uh, annelids? Now here they have a complete digestive system. A complete digestive system is present. They have excretory system. They also have a closed circulatory system. So you, do, you will notice that this is also an improvement here because in case of the nematodes, the circulatory system was missing. But now we have a circulatory system and that too a closed circulatory system. What do we mean by a closed circulatory system? First of all, do you know what is circulatory system? Circulatory system is the one which deals with the flow of blood throughout the body. So I'll just give you one liner uh, understanding of the systems. Excretory system, the system which uh, expels out the waste products from the body. 
digestive system the one which helps in digesting the food which we eat respiratory system the system which actually helps in breathing that is taking in the uh, oxygen which is needed by our body and expelling out the carbon dioxide then we have nervous system the one which deals with the nerves and that is how it connects the muscles together and helps in movement so the nervous system and muscular system they help in movement and also the nervous system deals with the brain and the spinal cord brain means it helps to think and all Correct. So these are some of the systems which we are mostly talking about here. So in this analytes, they have a complete digestive system, they have excretory system, they have a closed circulatory system. Closed circulatory system means that the blood flows in specific blood vessels. So that means no, it is not that the blood flows in random throughout the body. The blood flows only to specific blood vessels. There are specific containers inside the body into which the blood flows. Well, you will understand in detail about the circulatory system and its parts in your um, next class, that is in class 10th, when we will talk about each of these systems in detail. So for now, you can just understand that closed circulatory system means that blood flows into specific blood vessels. Right now, because of the presence of all these different systems, we say that they have organ system level of organization. Segmented body from head to tail, hence they are also known as segmented worms. Now, why do they have this segmentation on their body? Now, if you look at this worm, you can see the segmentation, right? It is divided into small, small segments. Why do we have this segmentation? That's because just now I told you here, we have extensive organ differentiation that means the organs are distinct here now this distinction is seen in the form of segmentation so when you look at an uh, analyte you can see that okay this part of the segmentation is the digestive system this part of the segmentation is reproductive system this part of the segmentation is excretory system the segmentation is actually uh, solving the purpose of distinct organ differentiation so it is actually differentiating the body into different organ systems clear so let us look at some of the examples of anilids now these anilids are mostly parasitic and they are also mobile that is they can move from one place to another so these are some of the examples of anilids the nearies the earthworm and the leech these are some of the examples so you can see if you look at their body they are segmented right otherwise just by looking at them you will feel that annelids are quite similar to the nematodes even they were this warm like structure the cylindrical in shape and long but the segmentation was absent in nematodes and that is present in this annelids right so let us try to look at the structure of one of these most common annelids that is the earthworm so if you look at this earthworm, this is, this forms the head of the earthworm and here it has its mouth. So this is the mouth and again this end of it, it is the anus through which excretion takes place and this part is the tail. So this is the head and this is the tail. So from starting from head till its tail, the segmentation is present. Now this segmentation depicts that, let us suppose this portion of the segmentation denotes the reproductive system. Maybe this portion of the segmentation will denote the digestive system. Again, this portion of the segmentation with, will start with the excretory system and so on. So that is how each part of the earthworm is segmented or separated into distinct organ systems right okay so now thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again